Thank you for checking out Lakehead International's videos. You're about to watch one of our Lakehead International live webinars, a fun and informative way to learn more about Lakehead while also meeting faculty, staff, and current students. If you have any questions throughout today's video, please comment below. Otherwise, let's get started. And with that, I want to welcome you to Lakehead University and thank you again for joining us. Um, so chatting a bit about Lakehead also comes with setting the stage for who we are and where we're located. Lakehead University is a public institution located in Canada, more specifically in the province of Ontario. We're proud to call two campuses our hometowns located in Orillia and Thunder Bay, Ontario. Um, and in terms of setting the stage of who we are, I also want to share some of our really proud rankings and then where we pride ourselves in our accomplishments. So speaking about being a research intensive university, we are recognized as number one in Canada in not-for-profit research income in our category. So that speaks, of course, to our engagement in research and, and perhaps experiences that you'll be able to partake in one day. We're also recognized as the number one university in North America under 9,000 students by the Global Impact Rankings with Times Higher Education. So that's something we're extremely proud of. And then on the national side across Canada, ranking us up against our fellow institutions, uh, we're proud to consistently be ranked in Canada's top 10 universities in our category. Speaking a bit more specific about what Lakehead offers, um, we're, we're extremely proud of our entrance scholarships for undergraduate international students. So last year alone, we gave over $7.8 million Canadian in entrance scholarships to international undergraduate students to help finance their education and pursue their uh, Lakehead journey. Um, chatting a bit more about that Lakehead journey, we're also extremely proud of our small class sizes. On our Thunder Bay campus, we have a 15 to 1 student to professor ratio. And on our Aurelia campus, we have a 13 to 1 student to professor ratio. What that means is that you're going to get more engaging uh, interactions with your professors, of course. So uh, perhaps more one on one time or at least in a smaller classroom environment where you're going to be able to build a strong relationships with your professors who will get to know you by your name and not just by your student number. But also that means, of course, then those small classroom environments help foster uh, engaged learning and, and deeper connections with your peers. What that all boils down to and what we like to share more about is uh, our employment rankings. So upon graduating from Lakehead University, 96.3% uh, of our grads are actually employed within two years after they walk across that stage. That's above the Ontario average for university graduates, which is 94.3. So a full 2% above. Um, which again has several factors that contribute to that. Um, and we're going to dive into that a bit further as we chat with our guests from business administration. Before we do that, though, I, I do want to share more about academics at Lakehead and actually set the stage of all the variety of programs that we offer. So we have programs in areas of study such as business, engineering, science, and environ environmental studies, natural resources management, education, social sciences and humanities, health and behavioral sciences, law and graduate studies. Those are our faculties um, where all of our undergrad and grad programs are housed. We do have over 85 programs here at Lakehead University. Um, so if you're interested, you can always learn more on our website at lakeheadu.ca forward slash programs. But today we are here to learn more about business administration and specifically those commerce programs. I am a proud alumni from the faculty itself. Uh, so with that, I have the distinct pleasure of welcoming Dr. David Richards, uh, who is the Dean and an Associate Professor. Uh, thanks, Jordan. I'm really happy to be here today and uh, uh, to have this opportunity to speak to uh, speak to this audience. Um, my role in the faculty is really to support students, faculty, and staff to provide uh, great uh, learning opportunities for all of our all of our learners, and uh, certainly. Uh, one of the things I really enjoy doing is uh, having that opportunity to uh, interact with students um, and uh, club leaders and, uh, and uh, different events on campus. Thanks. Awesome. Well, thank you again for joining us and taking some time out of a very busy schedule as the Dean. Um, but next, I also want to introduce one of my uh, past professors and uh, now colleagues, Dr. Kathy Sanderson. Thanks, Jordan. Hi. I'm an associate professor in human resources and organizational behavior. So um, when you come to Lakehead, which I hope that you will, 
um, you will probably see me in one of your courses related to human resources or managing change. Um, and you might also see me if you decide to participate in a case competition. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you. And I would highly recommend to our viewers as you uh, start to consider what majors and minors you may pursue. And then eventually, many years down the road, when you're at Lakehead and ready to declare those and, and really get to select those electives. Uh, classes that are, are uh, presented by Dr. Richards or Dr. Sanderson are, are highly encouraged. Um, that's from my personal experience. So like I said, make sure to save those onto your roster if you can or your schedule. On that note, though, uh, thank you again for joining us. I'll pass it over to Dr. Sanderson to kick things off and share more a bit about the faculty itself. Great. Thanks, Jordan. So the first thing that I wanted to highlight about our program that really is unique is our AACSB accreditation. Now, this is a globally recognized accreditation for schools of business. And less than 6% of all business schools worldwide have this accreditation. So that's one of the unique things about our program, but also it gives students, I think a couple of sort of guarantees. The first is that your degree, your business degree from Lakehead University will be recognized worldwide um, because this is a global accreditation. And the second is that you know that our curriculum is always up to date. It's being reviewed on a regular basis and that you're being taught by very qualified faculty. And our AACSB accreditation applies to both our Thunder Bay and our Aurelia campuses. Now, this is, I think, probably one of the best features of our undergrad degree. And that is that everyone takes the first two years as common years. That means in the first couple of years that you're studying business at Lakehead University, you are going to be taking courses in all of the disciplines. So you will take courses in marketing and accounting and finance and economics and human resources and information systems. You'll have full exposure to all of the areas of business. That's going to give you a really strong foundation and it's also going to let you explore all of the different types of business opportunities that there would be before selecting your major. So sometime during your second year, or right before you go into your third year, you're going to select your major. You don't have to decide when you first come, um, when you first apply, or when you're first uh, joining our business programs. You can decide that after you've had exposure to all kinds of areas. I think that's a really big advantage because perhaps in high school, you had exposure to accounting, but you probably didn't get a lot of exposure to something like business economics. And you might not have even had exposure to some of the other areas like uh, marketing or human resources. So this gives you an opportunity to learn about all kinds of different types of business and types of careers before you have to make that selection. I also want to add in and then speak to my own experience at this point, because I similarly think that the foundational years were really important to my success in business. It helped me uh, get a grasp on the fact that I was really passionate about marketing and that's where I saw my future and, and my major. Um, but it also identified human resources and industrial relations as a strong pathway for me as well. And so that's why I chose to minor in. Um, and now being out of Lakehead for several years and working in uh, the workforce, having that multi multidisciplinary approach and, and understanding has really allowed me to also understand how to work with different types of people. So there's going to be a certain type of person perhaps that pursues marketing versus a different mindset of people that pursue accounting. They think differently and they have different approaches and, and being able to see that in those first two years has allowed me to, to utilize several different approaches in my own thinking. So I think that was an important part of my educational journey um, and has aided me certainly in my career. So I have, I'm very appreciative of that, but I'll pass back to uh, Kathy to share more about some of our undergrad programs. Great, thanks Jordan. You hear that from a lot of students. 
right? That it helped them to clarify their path or um, a lot of students, of course, do decide to also have a minor. And it's that exposure in those first two years that I think helps with that decision-making process. Um, so we offer um, two different uh, undergraduate degrees, the Bachelor of Administration, which is generally a three-year degree and an Honours Bachelor of Commerce, which is a four-year degree. Now that Honours Bachelor of Commerce is where you're able to pick your major. And you can see here that there's an absolutely huge list of different majors um, that we offer. Um, we offer some at the Thunder Bay campus and some at the uh, Orwellia campus. Uh, but overall, you'll see that we cover all of the main areas in business. Um, we have just updated some of our um, programs. For example, you'll now see we have a major called Business Analytics and Information Systems, of course, a huge growing, growing area currently. And we also have um, an international dual degree program. And this is a partnership between Lakehead University and Rennes School of Business in France. Now, I don't want to give all the specific details on this program because I don't know all of them. But what I do know is that um, one of the students that I taught last year is part of the first group going over to the Wren School of Business to participate in this really interesting dual degree program. Um, and she could not have been uh, more excited. Uh, Dr. Richards, I don't know if you want to give a few more details on how this particular oh, sure i'll speak to that a little bit later in the presentation okay wonderful so that's a quick overview of our undergrad program and of course our audience could include students that have even pursued their own bachelor degree back home in their country or perhaps elsewhere in canada so shifting gears here um i'll, I'll have kathy share more about some of our graduate pursuits absolutely this is always a very popular program, the Masters of Business Administration, known, I think, worldwide as an MBA. Um, I always describe an MBA as a practical business degree. Most of the students who take an MBA have come from other disciplines. Um, so right now in our MBA program, we have people who have come from health sciences, engineering, uh, communications, uh, social work, and they are looking for a graduate degree that will help them within their chosen area of study from a business perspective. And so it might be someone who is, for example, um, maybe they're working as a forester, but they want to get into forestry management. Or perhaps they're an engineer who is looking to become a partner within an engineering firm and needs that business education. And so that is the role of the MBA program. And we have two options. One is a 12-month MBA that runs from September until the end of August. And the other is a 16-month MBA. And it can includes what we call an advanced study in management. And there's a number of different courses or streams that you can take within that advanced study. Uh, but that's an additional four months after the core 12 months of the MBA. We also offer a partnership with the Lakehead University uh, Bachelor of Engineering, where we can combine the years together. So while you're studying um, to get your engineering degree, you're also earning your MBA. Um, we are hopeful that within the next year, we're also going to have that partnership with our own forestry or natural resources um, department. And then the last master's that we offer is called the Master's of Science in Management. I describe this as an academic master's degree in business. And so in this program, you learn a lot about research in business. Um, so how to conduct research, not only academic research, but also practice-based research. And so this program is tailored for people who already have an undergrad in business and want to learn more about research in the areas of business. Awesome, thank you for that overview. Um, something I wanted to add here, 
Uh, the difference between the 12 month and the 16 month MBA, of course, is the additional four months that that's a given. Um, and the opportunity to uh, have the advanced studies in management and and streamline a more focused uh, approach to your degree. With that being said, it also uh, typically is pursued by international students that are interested in longer postgraduate work permits. Uh, if you pursue a 12 month or a one year program in Canada, typically that equates to a one year postgraduate work permit. If you pursue a program that's 16 months or longer, um, in most cases, students receive a three year postgraduate work permit. Um, we, however, cannot offer any guarantees, but that's uh, traditionally what we've seen in the past. And, and that can also be something uh, as a part of your consideration, perhaps while you're pursuing your MBA, if that's uh, the degree that you're interested in. Um, if you want to extend your studies, if you're you're hopeful that uh, you're excited about them, but you also would like to pursue something a bit longer, um, that's something I'd also encourage you. Of course, once you are here on campus, you can always work directly with our administrative team and your professors within the Faculty of Business Administration. So thank you again, Kathy, for sharing more about undergraduate programs, graduate programs, and giving us that that overview of the faculty and, and why it is um is so important for Lakehead's education. With that being said, um, shifting gears here slightly, but I'm passing over to Dr. Richards, we're going to chat about uh, that experiential and hands-on learning uh, that's built into the program, and that comes in the form of cooperative education and, and what that advantage looks like. So I'll pass it over to Dr. Richards. Great. Thanks, Jordan. Uh, yeah, so we do have co-op options within our uh, Honors Bachelor of Commerce program. Uh, the uh, Business Administration uh, major in Aurelia and the Accounting, uh, Finance, uh, Human Resources, Business Analytics and Information Systems and Marketing majors in Thunder Bay have co-op options. So typically students would do their co-op uh, between third and fourth year. Uh, and it is 12 to 16 months of paid employment in the field. The co-op um, the co-op placement is assessed to ensure that uh, it is meeting certain learning objectives. Uh, and and um, students do that. They return to their uh, fourth year of study, um, having had that work experience um, and uh, complete their degree. So it does, extend the degree a little bit um, longer, but uh, students graduate with that year of uh, paid employment in their field. Um, there is also an option to do a, a short co-op between uh, second and third year as well, uh, but great, uh, great opportunity to um, uh, graduate with a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, more experience than maybe some 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 others may have. Um, we've had some really great success in um, placing students with big companies. We've also had some really novel uh, and interesting uh, placements for students. Uh, a few years ago, one of our students went uh, to the Northwest Territories and worked for an airline there, which uh, uh, was uh, was not the typical co-op, but uh, you know we we have that opportunity to uh, uh, to be creative and to uh, come up with a, a placement that really is going to help a student advance their own uh, their own learning objectives. Um, yeah, so co-op is one uh, one option that we have for students. Um, and it fits within a, a series of other programs and other options that we have to advance experiential learning uh, for our students. Uh, one, uh, one other option, and this isn't in the Faculty of Business Administration specifically, this is something that's available to all um, Lakehead University students at the Thunder Bay campus, uh, and that is ingenuity. And ingenuity is, uh, our first on-campus entrepreneurship center. So this, uh, this, there's a physical space at the Thunder Bay campus. There's also programming available at the Aurelia campus to support entrepreneurship. But within the physical space um, at uh, in Ingenuity, there are 
hot desks um, and rentable office spaces. Uh, the, these are spaces for students to um, who want to start a business. Um, and we've had students who've started businesses while they're still a student. Uh, sometimes they start that process and then uh, graduate and fully launch their business. But there is the space available to support that. But also within that space, there are um, a number of workshops and other programming that help um, help uh, young, uh, well, you don't actually have to be young, you just have to be a student, uh, a student who has an entrepreneurial spirit who wants to, um, to start a business. Um, within that space as well, there is also a media uh, center. So there's um, green screens and digital uh, media equipment. As well as a maker space, and the and the maker space has three D printers and laser cutters and um, uh, other tools that uh, that uh, can help uh, a, a, an entrepreneur um, get their business going. This space is also, I think, beneficial because it brings together um, business students and students from other. Uh, programs, so engineering, computer science, social sciences, um, and some of the programming intentionally brings um, people with different backgrounds together, um, and we've um, uh, supported students uh, from multiple um, multiple uh, um, uh, academic programs uh, in their journey to, to start a business. Um, and the faculty is a big supporter of this space and, and a number of of us, including myself, are involved in supporting the programming there as well. I was going to add, David, it's also a space where community members and external uh, members to the Lakehead community are able to come in and share their own knowledge with students. So they've lived and breathed the entrepreneurial spirits that uh, have seen them be successful in their own career paths or their own businesses. Um, and so having a space that also brings them back to campus and then shares that knowledge with our students and can help guide students. Um, they don't always look at it as uh, helping a student become a competitor of their own. They look at it as an opportunity to share their years of experience and, and see that success um, of any student of any age. But uh, especially it's really exciting to see some of those first years that come and that they are so excited to be starting their university degree. And, and they're being pulled in a hundred different directions, but they're also hyper-focused on starting that, that business that they've always dreamed of. Maybe since they were a little kid or something in high school, they, they decided or developed or, or that idea came to their mind. Um, so it's really exciting. I've been in the space several times now, and, and I've seen some of the presentations where students will actually will compete for funding. Um, and it's called, uh, it's something the den i'm drawing a blank now but yeah. you might know. They, yeah they have a number of competitions there's pitch at competition there's disrupt at weekend um hack, they've had hackathons um and um yeah so so sometimes there are um prizes including financial awards for the students who win those competitions um ingenuity will also help um link students with potential funders in the community. And, and really the entrepreneurship programming at both campuses is, is closely tied uh, to the local entrepreneurship ecosystem. So um, it, really easy for students to get connected with um, other service providers. And so thank you, Jordan, for reminding me about that community space. Um, in ingenuity, so um, we have, uh, yeah, we have the uh, professionals from the um, community organizations actually come and deliver programming, or even just to meet with students um, in that space as well. Yeah, right. Thanks. And on, on the note of community partners, I think it's a perfect segue to our next slide, um, and I'll pass it over to you to introduce that and share more details about uh, Will. Sure. Yeah. So the Work Integrated Learning Program, or or Will, as we most commonly refer to it, um, this is an is a novel program. This is um, something that had been funded by the RBC Future Launch Initiative through the RBC Foundation, 
uh, we've been, this is our seventh year of running the program. Um, and it's a complement to a co-op program. Uh, and, and with this specific program, uh, the, um, the WILL program involves a part-time work placement um, throughout the year. Um, and uh, students typically do that in their third or fourth year. Uh, so it's about a day a week, uh, six to eight hours a week um, over the school year. There's also a workshop series that um, provides students with foundational skills that will help get them ready for their future careers. Um, and there's also a mentorship component. Um, we've also been, um, through that program, I've also been uh, leveraging uh, placements, virtual placements through Ripen and, and some other opportunities for students. Um, and the other piece that sort of fills out the experiential learning piece is that um, through various connections uh, in the community, we've also been, um, uh, we've had some really great success in embedding experiential learning projects within courses. So um, in, a, in a particular course, um, and I'll, I'm, I will um, reference uh, Dr. Sanderson's course a few years ago where um, for a few years in a row, the HR planning class did uh, consulting projects for lack of a better word, where they um, took what they were learning in their class, they did a little bit of research, and they made recommendations um, to the uh, to to uh, a company in the forestry industry um, uh, related to um, hiring and uh, labor supply um, and demand issues. So um, that's just one example. There are dozens um, of similar um, similar programs, and and really that it. It speaks to our commitment to preparing students for their careers after graduation, uh, and also it provides an opportunity for students to more easily translate what they're learning in in the classroom, in their in their textbooks, and and applying that to real life um, real life situations, uh, and in the process developing some new skills as well. David, I'm happy you mentioned the the course that Kathy delivered where we got to work with a partner because I was actually in that course. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I bring it up because it, it also ties into the overarching theme of research at Lakehead and, and the fact that we then were provided the opportunity to take that research that we had delivered to the external organization and, and present it to the partner. Um, and we did that in sort of a consultation period. And then they actually joined us in the classroom environment. Uh, select classroom members actually got to do, to do a site visit. I unfortunately was not available for that site visit, uh, but I know it was quite insightful. Uh, but where I was going with this was that we took that presentation and that research we had conducted and we did uh, participate in the research and innovation week and we did poster presentations. Um, to which then I was fortunate enough that my, my group was able to uh, win some sort of an award. It's it's not coming to mind what we were able to win, um, but I'm always still proud of that. And it really gave me that experience to now, although I don't work in academia per se, I understand how to conduct research. And, and if I was to ever pursue a master's, I would have a really strong foundation for that. Another thing I wanted to mention before we, we chat a bit about the international dual degree, which I know we had already teased a bit about, mm -hmm. Um, was some of the students that are on the screen are actually also from uh, when I was going to school. And so having that integrated work experience uh, provided some of these students with direct jobs at RBC. I know uh, a select person went into commercial banking on the screen, um, but then I also know of others that went into insurance. And so they may have learned that insurance realm from RBC and moved on to now pursue it in a different organization perhaps. There's some on the screen that had started their own businesses. I know two of them did at least. And then also one on the screen moved into a faculty of law, um, I believe at U of T. And so it just goes to show you sort of that integrated experience uh, was able to give students a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of experiences, but also help shape perhaps 
where they wanted to take their career. So they didn't all end up at RBC in this case. And then not all of them said, you know what, I loved it so much that I have to get a full-time job there. Although there were certainly opportunities to continue working with RBC, um, it, it really did shape them to pursue a variety of different paths to say the least. And and to be clear with the RBC, the RBC Future Launch is sponsored this uh, program. This is part of a broader initiative that they've taken on, but the students all don't get placements in RBC. And in fact, very few, very few do. Um, we've had students in small startups uh, to um, uh, large uh, organizations like hospitals. Um, it's, 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 you know, some financial institutions, insurance companies, but uh, the the experiences are um, really wide ranging for sure. Yeah, awesome. Good to know. Yeah. So with that, I'll I'll pass it back to you to share more about that dual degree that Kathy had uh, scratched the surface of. Yes. Yeah. So um, yeah. So we're really um, really excited about uh, the international dual degree program with the Rennes School of Business in 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 Rennes, France. Um, and this program is um, uh, sort of an exchange experience and sort of a transfer program. Uh, so each year, um, well, actually, I'll take a step back. So students from Lakehead University study the first two years at Lakehead. Um, they go to the Rennes School of Business for their third year, and then they return to Lakehead University for their, their fourth year. Uh, we also have student fr students from Wren who are coming to Lakehead during their third year. And when the students uh, from Lakehead finish their fourth year here, they earn their Honors Bachelor of Commerce program or Honors Bachelor of Commerce degree from Lakehead. But they also earn a Bachelor in Management from the Wren School of Business as well. So, um, so this so students in four years um, uh, potentially earn two degrees, one from Lakehead and one from Wren, uh, and uh, it is the same tuition cost, the tuition um, cost for all four years, um, and um, also while uh, earning those two degrees, also gaining some international. Uh, international experience um, and also an opportunity to travel um, uh, as well. Ren is fairly centrally located um, and easy to get around all of Europe uh, by train from from Ren. So it's a great uh, great opportunity for uh, students to learn. Should also point out that. Um, all of the programming, including the, the year at Wren, is uh, the courses are in English. Uh, so um, somebody wants to learn French um, and experience the French culture, they have that opportunity, but their programs, their courses are all in English. Thank you for clarifying that. I think yeah. that may have been a hesitation for many students that you know, learning English was overwhelming as it was, or or making sure they were going to have that proficiency level to be successful in English institutions. So that's a good news story for our international viewers who may be interested in doing this down the road, of course. Um, I know that this is one international experience of many, so I'll transition to the next slide where you can share more about uh, where students can go in, in other opportunities. Yeah. So in addition to the international dual degree program. Um, we also have a number of students who participate in an international exchange. Um, and typically that is done in the third year. Uh, international exchanges can be one term uh, or, or two terms or for a whole, um, a whole year. Um, we also have some opportunities um, where students can go on exchange for an even shorter period of time. Often in the spring or summer, there are, are uh, two, three, four week long programs that um, some students um, have participated in. Um, yeah, so the great, great opportunity to, um, you know, get a different experience 
experience um, and uh, see a bit of the world. Uh, there is support um, from, from within the university uh, in terms of um, preparation for an, inter, uh, an international exchange, um, as, as well as some uh, financial support um, as well. Awesome. Thank you for sharing more about that. Um, so this is sort of uh, shifting gears here, but also speaking to a culmination of your degree or, or speaking to the foundational knowledge that you have. Um, our success stories ties into when Lakehead students, uh, guided typically by a professor or a faculty member, uh, compete against fellow Ontario, um, Canadian colleges and universities, and in, in other cases, beyond just Canada as well. So this is actually Lakehead University's business, business administration students uh, won a, an accounting competition. So a total of 16 teams across Canada participated in a two-day conference uh, in downtown Toronto. It was called the Achieve Conference, um, and it included an accounting-based case competition, guest speakers, and networking events. Uh, Lakehead was actually able to place first in their category, um, which had a financial uh, compensation or a prize uh, to which then of course they they brought home and, and they could use to uh, perhaps pursue more case competitions or help fund other opportunities for their group. Um, another success story we have is our Enactus national competition that was held in Vancouver. Um, Lake had competed in this in this Canada-wide national exposition along with 68 other Canadian universities and colleges. So in, in Actus Lake had actually presented two different projects uh, at this competition. One was called Making Sense, and the other one was called Getting Financially Lit. So it's a dynamic 17-minute present presentation. Um, Lakehead was the runner-up in their league for the opening round, which was pretty impressive, of course, considering nearly 70 other institutions were participating. Uh, so one of many. Um, this, these two projects, Making Sense and Getting Financially Lit, uh, were, were all about financial literacy and then geared towards our hometown communities, especially Northwestern Ontario. Um, and so it was very interesting to see how they were able to use their skills developed in research here at Lakehead um, and their community-based learning also to then take that to a national scale and, and become the runner-up in this competition. So something that we were very proud of when they when they reached back at Lakehead, of course, celebrated widely. Um, it's just two of the examples. And, and also, if that intrigues you, perhaps, it's not necessarily always about winning. We celebrate the wins, but uh, most importantly, we're proud of the experience and, and the opportunities that you have to participate in this. Um, with that being said, I think it's also time to come truly full circle to after your degree at Lakehead, where do you anticipate on taking that? So I, I always like to note on slides like this is by no means is this an exhaustive list. Um, we would have another 20 slides to go if we had a, a comprehensive understanding of where our grads have gone and taken their Lakehead degree. Um, but you can see stuff like accountant, auditor, financial planner, human resources officer, project manager, social media consultant, somewhat similar to what I do almost, um, IT specialist, manager, or C-suite executive. Um, like I said, though, this is not an exhaustive list. So if you don't see something on here that that fits where perhaps you envision taking your Lakehead business degree, that's OK. There's going to be opportunities for you to uh, really craft your own education through perhaps your electives or the courses that you choose in your in your timetable. And with that being said, the experiential learning opportunities, the student life, the clubs, the, the activities and societies that you participate in that are outside of the academic realm, perhaps, are also going to help shape your Lakehead journey and, and craft perhaps where you may want to take your degree. Um, sharing one last touch point here is an outstanding alumni. This is Peter Lau, who um, is a graduate of Lakehead's business program, business administration. He is the founder of Asia One Communications Group, and one of the top, which is one of the top five commercial printing houses in Hong Kong. He also was the winner of the Outstanding SME Social Responsibility Award for, from the Mirror Post in 2015. Um, when we had an opportunity to sit down and catch up with Peter and, and ask him about his Lakehead experience, 
uh, he had some pretty great things to share, which always excites us to see that our, our alumni are proud of where they studied. Um, but essentially on reflecting, he had always dreamed of having studied at a Canadian university. Um, and, and he said that that was beyond his childhood imagination when he came to Lakehead. Um, he also said that his school life in Canada really had that foundational good training ground in terms of building the independence and leadership, which then laid the, the track work for his career in the business world. So that just goes to show you that uh, his experience, granted, uh, many years ago now, our, our business faculty has continued to develop and hone what they're able to offer. And, and now that we're AACSB accredited, uh, fewer than 6% of those schools around the world, business schools around the world are accredited, um, again, speaks to making sure that the curriculum that you're, you're pursuing is relevant the faculty delivering that are accredited and, and really strong faculty, um, and it's recognized worldwide. So we want to thank you again for er, joining us during this session. I want to take this opportunity to thank our panel guests for joining me today. Um, next, we're going to move into the live question and answer period. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, I want to encourage you to comment below or connect with us on social media. We can be found at Lakehead International on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Thanks for watching once again, and hopefully we'll see you at the next live webinar. Bye for now.